So in this billiards problem, we want to hit the cue ball with a force of F. The cue ball will then hit the blue ball and send the blue ball into the corner pocket at an angle theta. We are given mass of the balls, desired angle theta, force, time period, and the coefficient of restitution. And then we need to find, well, first we'll label these states. So right here, um, say right here before the impact is state zero. Um, then right after that impulse is applied, the cue ball starts moving. So this is state one. And then post collision is state two. We need to find velocity of the cue ball, state one, velocity of the cue ball at state two. So this will include magnitude and angle. And then velocity of the blue ball, magnitude and angle. All right. So we've got our diagram. The next thing we need to do is assign a coordinate frame. So we need to figure out what is line of impact, what is plane of contact. Well, we know which direction the blue ball is moving in. Because before it was static, it was just sitting on the table, and now we need to shoot it towards the pocket in that direction. So that's the direction we want the force to go. That is the line of impact. So X, line of impact, momentum is conserved. And then Y is just going to be 90 degrees to that plane of contact. In that direction, velocity is conserved. because there are no forces in that direction. All the force between the balls went to send the static ball into the pocket. So if we're looking at this and we know that if the cue ball starts moving and then it hits the blue ball, the cue ball is gonna slow down and it's probably gonna move a little bit to the left and then the blue ball is going to speed up. So when we're calculating these velocities, we should, kind of use a reality check to see if our answers are reasonable. Now from zero to one, we do impulse and momentum. So zero to one, impulse and momentum. So F delta t plus m vc0 equals m vc1. Well, the cue ball was originally not moving, so this is zero. And then we just rearrange f delta t over m equals vc1. We put the numbers into here, then we have 16 times 0 0.1 over 0 0.16 equals 10 meters per second equals VC1. And that is in the vertical direction. Okay, so not too bad. Now we know VC1 we can use the vector components x and y with the oblique collision equations and then find vc2 and vb2. So first we need to figure out some of these angles here. Well we know 
So if x is going like that, y comes all the way through like this, and this angle is 90 degrees. And this big angle is 180. So if we name this, let's say this is gamma, we need to find that angle. We know that gamma equals 90 degrees minus theta. Well, theta is 30, so gamma equals 60 degrees. We know that because 180 minus 90 is 90, and so gamma plus theta has to equal 90. So anyway, gamma is 60 degrees. Then we can, now that we know that angle, we can split the cue ball velocity into its x and y components. So vc one x, vc one x, goes in that direction, it's this component, which is the sine. Vc1 sine gamma. So that is gonna be 10 sine of 60 degrees. And then Vc1y equals Vc1 Cosine gamma equals 10 cosine 60 degrees. So this is 5. This is 8.66. Okay. Now, in the y direction, velocity is conserved. So we know this equals v c 2y. Then in the x direction, we can use the equation and conservation momentum and solve for vc2x and vb2. So if we do that, then we have mbc1x plus mbb1x equals m v c 2x plus m v v 2. Well, originally v v 1 was not moving, so we get rid of this. And then conveniently, we cancel all these masses. So then we're just left with v c 1x, which we got here, 8.66 equals v c 2x plus v v 2. And then in the E equation, we've got E equals negative B C two X minus B B two over B C one X minus zero. So this equals zero point nine, which equals negative vc2x plus vv2 over 8.66. So then 7.8 plus vc2x equals vv2. So now we take this and plug it in over here. So 8.66 equals VC2X plus VB2, which is 7.8 plus VC2X. So this equals 7.8 plus 2 VC2X. And then so this comes out to be 0.433 equals V C 2X. We take that, plug it in over here, 7.8 plus 0.433. 
it's 8.23 meters per second equals V, V2. So we know that VB2 is going 8.23 meters per second at theta, which was given in the problem, 30 degrees to the right of the vertical. This is VB2. Now VC2, we have to take the Y component and the X component. So VC2 equals square root of 5 squared plus 0.433 squared equals 5.02 meters per second. And what angle is that one at? Well, we know it's x velocity and it's y velocity. So we can get this little angle right here. We'll call that delta. But really what we need to know is this angle. So we'll call that beta. But looking at this, delta plus beta plus theta equals 90 degrees. So then beta is just going to be 90 minus theta minus delta. So first we need to figure out delta. Delta equals tan inverse of, in this case, it's going to be the inverse tangent of the x component over the y component because the x component is this part and the y component is this part. So that's going to be tan inverse of 0.4. 3, 3 over 5 equals 5 degrees. And then beta equals 90 degrees minus theta minus delta equals 55 degrees. So VC2 is 5.02 meters per second at 55 degrees left of vertical. So just for a reality check, we have VB2 It's going at angle theta at some speed, and the speed is 8.23, which is less than 10. VC1 was 10, so this is, this is good. It should be lower than that. And then the cue ball should also have slowed down. We get here that it's 5.02, and it's going to the left. Okay, so that also kind of makes sense. So to recap what we did for this problem, then first, we had the diagram. Second, we assigned line of impact and plane of contact. Now we knew to put line of impact along the direction that VB2 goes because that is the direction of the force. Force is mass times acceleration, if BV2 accelerates towards the pocket, then that's the direction of force, that's the line of impact. Then plane of contact, the y direction was just perpendicular to that. So then it just took a little bit of geometry to get these angles here. And then we recognize that in the x direction, momentum is conserved. And then in the y direction, velocity was conserved. So the y direction was pretty easy. We just found that velocity from the vector component of VC1. And it's the same at VC2 in the y direction. And then the x direction, that was a little more complicated. We had the conservation momentum equation and the E equation. So we just put numbers in and solved out for VB2 VC2x. So once we had VB2, we already knew the angle it was at because it was theta given in the problem. So 
that is one of the answers. And then BC2, we had to get the magnitude from the X and Y components, and then we got the angle. So that's how we solve that problem. So now we're going to simulate this. You can see here, I put in mass of the balls, angle Q represents theta, coefficient of restitution, applied force, and time period. So if we run the simulation, you can see Q stake hits, white ball goes, blue ball goes. We'll run it one more time. State zero, state one, state two. 